my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for um, another review or recap of Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard, and this is season two, episode. I didn't even look. Hold on, I kind of messed up here on this one. I think it's episode eight. Is it episode eight? We're about to find out. Yes, episode eight, and this is called Gossip Girls. And this episode was good. It was really, really good. It was good to me. Um, we're going to continue on doing what I did last week, where I didn't really go in order all the way. I kind of basically went by the people on the show and what they had going on. Um, so we got that. So let's let's continue on with that trend. And um, I'll share my thoughts and we'll go from there. So first one we'll talk about is Alex. So Alex, he ain't had much going on this, this episode. He's been still cutting in the background, like staying in the background for the most part. Now he did have his boy um, Nick's back towards the end of the episode and I respected it. Um, and also, too, I noticed that Noelle's just, like, asking him all these, like, serious, like, kind of questions and, like, bringing it towards his way. Um, and I guess, like, watching the show, it seems like they're alluding that something else is still going on with no Noelle and Alex, but we're not seeing it. And I'm curious about that because it just seems like Alex has just been in the cut, in the background, just kind of just, you know, he's... He sees a mess, but he's like avoiding it. A little bit like Shanice, but not all the way. Shanice kind of messed up this episode. Um, but for the most part, them two have always, them two I figure out this whole entire season for the most part have been like staying in the back. <laughs> staying in the background. They've been doing that. So anyway, Alex, um, again, not much going on this episode other than having um, Nick's back towards the end of the episode. Um, we'll, we'll go from there with that. And Amir. Amir, we're going to do Amir and Natalie together because I still don't like Anna I still don't like Natalie. Um, I saw a different side of her this episode where it seems like her and Tasia, which is Nick's, um, girlfriend, they're close friends, according to her. So she really, um, cause we saw the preview, right? Of how, Nally was going to talk to Tasia about Nick's behavior. And really, it was behavior from last season and not really this season. So it, it was kind of irritating how all this even came up again because this was already addressed last season. And you'll be surprised who really was the one who addressed it. Now, I will say this. I think Natalie tried to do the playing dumb I think she definitely tried to play dumb and try to say she didn't, she did not bring this up to cause any drama in the relationship. She just wanted to get to the bottom of it. But we all saw last season, so we already knew how this ended. So to me, that doesn't make sense. I think that's a lie, number one, partially. Number two, you let, you let Bria set you up on that one. Because Bria is the one who actually set this whole thing up for real, for real. She literally threw her rock and tried to hide her hand this episode. And Bria, we'll get to you later on. Because this definitely was a Bria-heavy episode. But, um, yeah, no, 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 no. Natalie, I feel like you kind of knew what you were doing. And Tasia saw the play a mile away and didn't even let you do it. Because what happened is, so we had this scene where... And this is the day after the party. And Amir is hungover. Amir was missing, missing action pretty much most of this episode. Because he was a drunken fool trying to resolve Bria and Simon's relationship issues. Because we saw at the, at the very end of the last episode, Bria and Simon blew up. And he's trying to resolve like their issues, right? But he is clearly gone. He's clearly gone with the wind. Not sober at all. And... Then he even had, even in the truth, um, I think they call it the truth room or something like that. It's, they're basically their confessional. He's gone. He's, he's, he is white boy wasted. 
Shannon Tatum. Yeah. <laughs> For those who, those who know who know, Flight Four Bracelet, Shannon Tatum. He, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was singing a little bit of Glorilla there, just a little bit. Anyway, but um, Bill's Meg the Stallion is probably singing. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, I kind of I kind of gave away where that came from. But my whole point is, yeah, Amir was gone. He was gone with the win. Um, and we see. We see like the next day because they sh they recap the party why he was him and Preston were taking shots after shots after shots after shots after shots. The difference is Preston can hold his liquor, but Amir cannot <laughs> because Amir made a fatal mistake, and this is one of those things that feel like it's a rookie mistake. And I'm not doing this in a I'm not trying to be stereotypical in a messed up way. The girls and the gays know how to party. Okay. So you're not going to be drinking them under the table. <laughs> I, I just, I, I ain't going to hold you. You're, if you try that game, you're going to fail. Unless you hang out with the girls regularly. And then about time you're at the point, it's kind of like, should I be happy that I'm able to keep up or not? Nah? <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> I love I love my girls. I love my girls and I love my gays. Y'all already know, but I know this because I, I know. <laughs> that's just that's just that's law. Just don't try it. Don't try it. Maybe take every other shot to the shot that they're taking, or don't take shots at all. Maybe don't do that. But anyway, um. So, yeah, Amir was gone off the win. And so the next day, he was pretty much hungover the whole entire day. And, like, grossly hungover. Like, ugh. I was hungover for him watching him on TV. And I don't really care for Amir like that. But I don't like seeing anyone that hungover. <laughs> like, ever. Um, but anyway, so while this is happening, Natalie is getting chummy with some of the girls. But it's not, for me, to me, it's not the right reason. And we saw previews of it from this from the episode before. And Natalie, I think, even is noticing that's how she's getting pictured as. Because she even kind of said it in the episode. She's like, I don't want to be looked at as being messy and trying to start things. But it's like she says that, but then she says, but. Whenever you say you don't want to be looked at a certain way, but. Know that you're being looked at in the exact way that you mentioned initially. And I think she knew that. So anyway, so while Amir is trying to get his life together the next day in the worst way possible, um, she, it's Natalie, Shanice, um, Bria, and Noel. They all just somehow start talking about the recap of the party and they start talking about Nick and his behavior and how he flirts with some of the women. And, um... Bria's putting 20 on 10. And. Like. Noelle doesn't have any right to say anything. Because she wasn't there last season. But she's trying to like. Put her two cents in a little bit. But I think she quickly backs out. When she realizes that Bria is literally putting 20 on 10. And is making it worse. And Shanice just kind of there like. Oh. Shanice is kind of there in the background for the most part, too. But really, the two corporates of this whole entire thing was Bria and Natalie. Natalie decides and takes it upon herself after talking to the ladies that she should bring that back to Tasia. And the others are like, I'm not doing that. Like, everyone else is like, I'm not doing that. And Bria knew why she wasn't going to do it because she did it already last, last season, the end of last season. Um, so... Like, her doing it again is going to look a certain way because it is... The way it looks, is, it, to me, it seems like it's what it is. It's giving... Bria's relationship is not good, so she's trying to make everyone else's relationship miserable. That's how it comes off to me. But it also comes off that... Bria is fully invest, has fully... She's fully in and all in on being a villain this season. But I don't like her playing this victim. I want her to be, this is the only thing, Bria, and I'm saying this to you, because you are making this, you are, you are making this season spicy in an annoying way to a lot of people. 
me included just a little bit, but not all the way, because I don't take you seriously all the way. Sorry, not sorry. But um, what would just give you that extra oomph? If you're going to wing in being a villain, don't try to play victim. Stand in it. If you stood in being a, a villain in this house, I think that would turn people around. Because some people like me, I'm kind of one of those people... I kind of like I kind of like the villain sometimes. As long as it's not toxic, it's just light, fun, shade, and light and fun. Like what's going on for the most part, um, minus the relationship thing. I think that's a little bit of a line crossing we shouldn't do. But all the other stuff was pretty much lighthearted for the most part. So if you're going to do it, just just do that though. Um, but anyway, um, more about Natalie though. So Natalie does eventually try to tell Tasia. And Tasia, I love her to death. It's like she knew. She kind of had an idea something was going on. And she was like, nope, I'm about to go. I ain't got time. So she 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 shut it down immediately. And Tasia was not happy about it. She was pissed. Because she was like, you're not going to get me involved in this stuff. Because I think Tasia literally is there for the right reason. She's there to support her man, Nick. And she just wants to go to the house, enjoy herself, and then go home. She ain't trying to be part of any of the mess. Whereas Natalie, she is just bone carrying like a mother. And I just hope come the reunion, she gets called out for it too. And some of her microaggression behavior. Because she has had some instances where I'm like, oh, you bond with us when you're causing conflict. But you're not bonding with, with us when everything's all good. Interesting. I'm sorry, it just looks away. Whether that's what it is or not, it looks away. And, um... And maybe Tasia, maybe Tasia was able to catch that T and just knows that, and just like does a whole like work because I because we don't know if Tasia feels the same way about Natalie about them being friends. That's what Natalie said. Tasia might just be like, "I'm cordial with you because I I see you." Some people are like that. Sometimes you're going to be cordial towards people that you know don't really mess with you for real, or vice versa to keep the peace. And also to stay out of the mess. Because sometimes it's just better to just do that and just take the high road and stay out of the mess. Um, I wouldn't say always, but sometimes, you know. So maybe that's what it is. We don't know. But anyway, <laughs> Natalie gets, gets, gets caught up later on, though. Because the way Nick blew up at everybody towards the end of this episode, I never seen this side of him. And... It did end with a to be continued, so that is a spoiler alert. But let me bring more to what, up the why it happened that way. So anyway, we still don't like Natalie over here. Like, I don't. I don't like her for this show because I just feel like she has some ulterior motives. And I just don't like, I don't like the, I don't like the undertones that I've seen. So there's that. So side note, um, Amir, of course, has his girls back and saying, oh, she wouldn't do any of this stuff maliciously. And I'm just like. But also, too, when it comes to Amir, Amir is just not the brightest crayon in the box. So I I, <laughs> I don't take him seriously either. But honestly, come next season, I still have this energy and have, have this feeling. I think Amir doesn't need to be back next season. And then that way, Natalie isn't there ne back next season either. Just because I still just don't understand how you... I don't know. For me, the ditziness is getting old for me. It was cute at the beginning till it wasn't. I'm just kind of over that ditziness. Um, and I, also, I just want to see a couple of new people on the show. And I want to see, oh, the guy who was there last season. I want, I want to see him back because he was really, really good for the show. But anyway, moving on. So Bria. Oh, my gosh. This episode was highly about Bria. It was crazy. It was crazy. So we saw that Bria and Simon got in an argument towards the end of the episode. And... We under so what it is is Bria is not arguing necessarily about this flamingo thing. It's about a much deeper issue. And I did not expect this issue to come out, but when it did, it made me feel a different way in a positive way about Bria. Outside the mess she's causing with Nick. I already kind of alluded to what she's doing there. She basically alluded again to the fact that if with the Nick situation. So let's go with the Nick situation and then we'll get back to her own personal team. 
with the Nick situation, she said this in front of Natalie, which I don't know why these girls decide to... <sighs> the thing that bothers me, and sorry, let I will let me let me go back to the the Natalie, Bria, um, Shanice, and Joelle situation. Hasn't any of y'all people ever told you you don't discuss certain things to mixed people? To a mixed crowd? That was house business. That should have stayed within the house. She's not part of the house. She's a girlfriend of someone that's part of the house. And the issue's with Nick. It's not really with Tasia. So that's also someone who's within the house. And then... So, so that bothers that that bothered me right then and there. And then Noelle later on at the end of the episode is kind of like, this was girl talk. Yeah, it was girl talk, but at least now they know they should have not included her in this. And again, I hope they eat her outcome the reunion. But anyway, I digress. Bria put 20 on 10 when she was talking about the situation when it comes to Nick and says, and she said that and alluded to if one of the women that he was flirting with would basically take him up on the offer. He would be the type to take it there all the way. Which is a really messed up thing to say about someone. Whether it's true or not. And we don't know if it's true or not because we have never seen that be a thing. And I I don't know any of these people in real life. So I'm going to go on the side of being... <laughs> I'm going to give Nick the benefit of the doubt. And those who have followed my channel enough... Y'all already know why I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Y'all know I have a little bit of a crush on that guy. But <laughs> I just don't think he would do that. I think he's just kind of touchy-feely and flirty. And I'm like that too. I'm touchy-feely flirty, but that doesn't mean I'm going to sleep with anyone and everyone that I flirt with. I mean, some of them maybe, but <laughs> not everyone, you know? And of course, when you've been drinking, that kind of behavior gets elevated. Um, me, I'm already a flirt, so it's not that much of a surprise for most people. But Nick, I think what it is with him is that he, it gets, he's not really flirt or touchy feely until the drinking happens. But at the end of the day, none of these people know the inner workings of her and Tasia's relationship. Maybe she's very secure in her relationship and doesn't care. I think the only thing that was flagrant with Nick did last, what, what Nick did before, was what how he acted last season. This season, I'm not seeing any issues. It's like, what is, just because he's in a relationship doesn't mean he can't be touchy-feely towards other women or people. As long as the lines are not being crossed and him and his you know partner have an understanding, who cares? And by the way, that is what pretty much Alex said. <laughs> you know, at the end, I was kind of on his side about that. I was like, who cares? That's not your relationship. You know, you're not Tasha. So why do you, why are you that invested? You know, anyway. Okay. Again, this episode with Jasmine, not much, not much going on with Jasmine. Jasmine did do the bike ride. So also in this episode, they did this, um, they do an annual bike ride every year when they bike around the island. And um, almost everyone did it except for Preston, um, Nick, and Bria in the house. And then because every, they had their significant others there, so they didn't do it. But everyone else pretty much did. And we see that Jasmine and Jordan, they're bonding and, you know, biking together. And it seems like things are going to get better with them. But besides that, not much with Jasmine nor Jordan. Jordan, the only thing that happened even with Jordan this episode was that she kind of had Nick's back when it came to the situation with him being handsy. She's like, we've already addressed this and that's the kind of relationship that we have. I wasn't part of it because again, the issues with Nick has nothing to do with the people that he actually literally is has been handsy with. It's with the people who he's not being handsy with that have the issues, which to me, I'm just kind of like, I don't understand, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to skip around a little bit and get to it. So with Summer um, Summer and Jasmine, we start seeing that, that they're starting to bond a little bit more. And this is during the day of the party, still the night of the party, because she went on to her room to just kind of chill cause, um, and um, because she was over the drinking. And I think she found out that she has a tough time socializing being, you know, sober at a party. 
And, but basically, um, Jasmine kind of took her under her wing and it seems like, you know, Summer's doing better this episode. She wasn't really being a drama queen this episode. She was also able to articulate her thoughts more and not everything else. So I think she might be onto something. I think she needs to just stop drinking. But we did see preview for the next episode and she spirals again and wants and thinks she shouldn't stay in the house anymore. Which, honestly, until she gets some therapy, I kind of could agree with her with that. But I am curious what brought her to that conclusion. Um, but yeah. So Shanice in this episode, she was part of the whole mess when it came to the Nick situation. Um, she kind of got herself out of it super quickly though. Um, but not really. Because Nick is mad at everybody who was part of it. And so Shanice keeps trying to say, I don't think you're handsy towards me per se, but your eyes be wondering. And so... <sighs> Nick, I love you to death, but hit dog with holler when it comes to that because your eyes do be wandering. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that unless, as long as you and your partner have an understanding of that because just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you're dead. Like, you can look around, you know. If you're with someone who's insecure, maybe they will feel a way about it. But as long as the communication is open, you know, you can't expect, and this is, I guess, the the... The moral of the story for this episode, for me at least, and sorry, my hair, I don't know what's happening. I hope I end up pulling this out and I feel like I'm going to. So I kind of want to leave it alone. Did I find where it starts at? Like, the way I will find a way to, okay, did I clean, okay, cleaned up. Sorry, okay, anyway. But the moral of the story is for me in this episode is like, I don't, like how people have expectations for someone else's relationship as if it's theirs. Mind your business. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Mind your business. Anyway, so other than that, Shanice also got kind of got sick from the party the day before. So she actually ended up sleeping in Nick's bed because um, Tasia is actually sleeping in Shanice's bed. So that that's that. Um, and yeah, Preston this episode really wasn't doing too much this episode. He was, well, <laughs> again, the guy who was doing the shots with, um, Amir, but he was able to handle it just fine. And, um, we get to know that Dennis and him, like everyone loves Dennis, you know, and say so he's like the happiest guy on earth, which is now Preston's fiance. And um, Preston was pretty much the voice of reason. So when Nick had his frustrations before he confronted the ladies, he did talk to Preston about it first. And Preston was confused, equally as confused as Nick was, as equally as confused as I was. Because again, this feels to me personally like forced drama. This should not have been brought up. I don't know why someone wanted to do that to Nick. It was really, to me, I thought it kind of came out of nowhere. And maybe there should have been more of a reason. Like, they did show highlights a little bit of, like, the Freaknik party, but it was a Freaknik party. Again, I feel like a lot of what the ladies were saying, particularly Shanice and Noelle and Bria, a reach. And Natalie, it's your fault for bringing it up to him. I don't think they had any intentions of bringing it up to him, but I don't know why they would talk to you in front of you if they didn't think you were going to do that. So again, I'm looking at all four of y'all a little bit like, I'm giving y'all the side eye for that. So, Noelle kind of just did get eat up this episode um, because Nick called her out first and foremost once things hit the fan. And the way he read her for filth, he's like, I know you want to be included in this group, but this isn't the way. I, 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 I ain't touch you. I ain't done none of that to you. Um, and she was like, that's not what I said. And she tried to, you know, she got herself out of it fairly quickly. Um, for the most part unscathed, but not really because then he's like, I want all the ladies to be here. I want to know what, what was said and what y'all were trying to do. Because the point is, Natalie was going to try to tell Tasia what happened here. And that was not her place. And really was none of their places to try to do any of that stuff. And Shanice's angle has always been the same angle. Like, 
but you are handsy. But the thing is, I don't understand why these ladies don't seem to understand. If Tasia is okay with it, she saw last season, we all saw last season, why is it your business now to keep trying to bring it up to her if she has already seen it? I'm pretty sure outside of just this house, if he goes out drinking, he probably acts like that all the time. As long as there are certain boundaries that isn't being crossed, which again, you're not in their relationships, so you don't know what their boundaries are. Why is it your business? So anyway, Noelle kind of got ate up this episode when it came to that and didn't really have much to say. Um, yeah. <laughs> and for the most part, we know that this episode was a Nick Heavy episode, not the right reason. Um, and I kind of already said what was going on with Nick with everything else. And um, yeah, it was kind of messy. And it did end with the Nick with to be continued when Nick is still trying to get some answers and he is upset. He is pissed. And this, by the way, this is after Tasia um, and um, Dennis have been he um, head back to the airport. So they're not there in the house anymore. So he's having this meeting to try to figure out what's going on. And um, also Summer didn't really have anything to do with it either because Summer's like, our stuff's already been addressed. Like, the fact is what, what gets me is the girls that he's been the most handsy with don't have a problem with it and didn't see, see it to do what the others, the other girls who had nothing to do with it did. It doesn't make sense. And hopefully during a reunion we get an answer for it, but... For the most part, that does conclude the episode. So really all that happened here was the, the conclusion of the party from the night before. Um, because that ended up to be continued because of the Bria and um, Simon situation. And then we also had um, the uh, bike ride. And then everyone saying goodbye to their couples. And then, yeah, the blow up. And so we'll see what happens next. Um, oh, also Simon did apologize to Nick about the flamingo thing. Um, even though Nick didn't feel a way about it, he did appreciate the apology. He's like, yeah, I, I do appreciate the apology. Um, because also Bria helped break down why that was not appropriate. And hopefully, you know, he, hopefully Simon understands that you know, you can still be yourself, but there's time and place. And to Bria, and to Bria, I'll say this to you. You don't need to overreact all the time. Like, you can feel a way, but don't make a scene out of it. And I think the problem is both of them have a tendency of making a scene, but in a different way. Like, um, press, um, so basically Simon makes a scene being goofy and silly when it's not appropriate at times. And Bria's always flying off the handle. And that is just like a mood shifter that's not okay, like ever. And even though in her, in some cases, in the cases that she at least presented to Simon, she has good reason for it. There's still a time and place and there's still a way to excuse yourself without making a scene. Because at the end of the day, when you do all that, the people who are saying those racist and horrible things about you, they won. They literally get to be like, ha, 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 I proved my point. Look how, it, you know, don't do that. Give them nothing. That's one thing I think Bria needs to learn. You need to learn to give give them nothing. Like, kind of what you're trying to do to Nick then in this episode. You're trying to give him nothing. So you have it in you to do that. You could do that in other situations when you have the white counterparts being disrespectful towards you. Anyway, but that does conclude the episode for today. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mellow Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.